custom in serving collard greens, black eyed peas, and ham, or some part of the hog on New Year's Day. Reach us back to West Africa. My baby loves collard greens. During slavery, the custom evolved and continued even after the Civil War. My baby loves collard greens. When New Year's Day became known as Emancipation Day in the Black community. Every New Year's Day, from as far back as I can remember, we always had collard greens. The black eyed peas we usually ate on New Year's Day. And we would have greens on New Year's Day. On New Year's Day, Many Americans, especially those with Southern origins, eat a meal which includes collard greens, cornbread, and a dish combining black-eyed peas, also known as cow peas, and white rice. This entree is called Hop and John. Well, we had Portuguese rice, it's called jag, which is uh, rice and peas together, rice and beans, kidney beans together. So we would have jag. Um, so that was just that's our own version of uh, rice and peas. <laughs> We always had collard greens, we had ham hocks in the collard greens, we had black eyed peas, we had white rice, we had yams, we had cornbread. And I mean, it was just a tradition. This was our New Year's dinner. My grandparents' birthdays were around the end of de December, you know, beginning of January, end of December. So we would always have that kind of celebration. <laughs> My family did not eat. Um, collard greens and black eyed peas on New Year's Day. My family is from Jamaica. My father would always say, no matter what, have money in your pocket at midnight. Um, if you bring in the New Year with money in your pocket, you'll have money in your pocket all year. My family, New Year's Day, the tradition was to sit around and watch a bunch of football games. There are several New Year's superstitions, traditions, and myths brought to or assimilated by Africans in the New World. For example, Hogmanay. A widespread Scottish custom took hold with African Americans early on. Those who practice hogmanay, or first footing, believe that the first person to cross the threshold on January 1st will determine the fate of the household for the year. The luckiest possible visitor is a tall, dark-haired, handsome man, preferably bearing coal, a coin, some bread, or salt. It is considered extremely bad luck to allow a woman to be the first person to enter a home on New Year's Day. And if we didn't eat it, nothing would go right for the year. Okay, we wouldn't have money in our pocket, we wouldn't have any kind of good luck. The notion of luck was a common thread among the superstitions of enslaved Africans. Good luck being terribly important to a group of people who had so little control over their own lives. My mom always made sure that the house was clean. I believe she would clean on New Year's Eve. The tradition of cleaning the home on Old Year's Night was brought to the States by West Indian slaves, for no sweeping was to be done on New Year's Day, lest one sweep away one's luck, or worse, sweep a loved one away.